an eco village, and uh, yeah, our plan is to be a little village here. So we have uh, about 15 to 20 houses with the families or individuals living, and then we have a lot of uh, communal square meters where we want to have a little bit of a village life. That we grow our own vegetables and we have a communal kitchen and a little shop and cafe. And yeah, but still, it's in its early stages, so it's a yeah, an eco village in the in the making. Yeah, my name is Freya, and uh, I am the founder of Friskorn. Then this place came up. It was a friend of mine from here that just posted it, and I'm like, wow, this is crazy, so big. So it was a bit of spontaneous decision, and uh, we were just like, okay, when do you ever get the opportunity? to buy such a big place in a forest again. So we just went for it without any plan and we just thought, we're gonna find the right people and make it work. <laughs> we call it more self-directed learning. A lot of people don't like the word unschooling because it just explains what it's not. And the thing it's not, it's not school in that way that they decide what to learn is more like self-directed learning that the kids um, show a desire for interest in something and then the adults feed that uh, curiosity and uh, that's how they learn so they learn by their own curiosity but with the adult supervision They can really bond with nature, and uh, and I feel like a lot of the a lot of the difficulties in our society is that we're so disconnected both with nature and with our family and with the food that we eat, and our ideas to get connected back to the land and uh, to each other. And uh, I, I I think this is really valuable gift to give to our children. The challenges of this project has been finding the right people. Now I feel we have the good, uh, good group, so now it's really going in the right direction. And uh, right now I feel it's it's going well, uh, and I'm sure other problems will show up. Um, we just had this hard space meeting where it shows that we have different different things annoy us, and I guess the biggest challenge is to find something that everybody can agree with and everybody feel happy about. <laughs> yeah. My name is Niklas. And I'm Kia. And we live in Friskoen with our three children. Eske, Siril or Isaac. We want to stay home with them, being taking part of their education and, and childhood, and therefore we, we chose this way. So we really want to spend a lot of time with our kids, and to when they go to school, they spend like 80% of their time in the school. So and when when we felt like from the beginning, when we had them when they were little, we were like it's very important to to follow their development in their what they want and the interest of them and so so it makes sense to keep on doing that even though they get older and and I think that that we chose it because we feel like it's the way of the most that has the most potential for the kids We saw it as a very important uh, decision to uh, to join a community with the same visions. And when we came here, we were not in doubt that this was the place that we're gonna spend our our time being together with our children and taking part of the project. Oh, no, no. 
I can express it that way that I have never been a better place with my family than here. I feel that this kind of living, when you share a lot of things in life with other families, is very meaningful for me. Mm. And I can see at the children that they're also taking part of something very meaningful for them as well. We, we did always search for this without knowing what it exactly was that we were searching for. But I think what you said is just sharing the life mm. with a lot of nice people. <laughs> the challenge of community that you have to agree and you have to not step on each other's feet and uh, and everybody has different boundaries and uh, you have to learn your own boundaries also because we are not so trained in that to people are used to like okay I don't like this I walk away but here we have to find a way and that's a big challenge yeah, we were really naive and we just thought, yeah, we can just build this, but none of us know how to build and we also didn't have a lot of money. So after getting a bit of reality <laughs> check, we, we, it was really challenging and I didn't know how to get the money, but somehow I just knew that when you're a lot of people, everybody fits in and uh, then you can make, you can lift really heavy challenges. It's really nice to have uh, volunteers here because uh, it's a lot of when we're here, like everybody has their family life and sometimes nobody has really energy to put into creating a good atmosphere and, 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 and clean up like bigger projects. And then the volunteers come here with so much energy and fill the space with life and uh, that's really wonderful. It always feels really, really good to do what your heart feels like doing. Sometimes when I was traveling, everybody said, oh, I would like to do that, but I traveled when I left, I had no money. And it's everybody thinks it's the money that stops you from doing what you want to do, but I think it's not. I think it's an idea. One thing, <laughs> a bit funny thing, when I went here one of the very first times, I just went for a walk and I found this little card on the ground and I turned it around and it said patience. <laughs> and uh, I think I learned patience. <laughs> and it was a good, uh, good little message from <laughs> I don't know where that came uh, because things take time and this is, takes time and it's not going to be finished next year. It's going to take time. So I think that's the biggest lesson. <laughs> Thank you.